So, Mr. Lonsdale started off last video with a word called entropy. I already messed it up. Let's try this again. Entropy. Any H's in there? Good, because in my notes it had an H. So, entropy, which is what we started on last time with the equation, is the energy that's distributed among the various motions of molecules. So this, if you remember back to like solids, liquids, and gases, is just talking about how much the molecules are moving around. So we know in solids, they're static, right? They're not moving. Liquid, maybe a little bit more fluid, a little bit more energy separating those molecules, and they're bouncing around a little bit more. And then you have gaseous molecules that are completely filling the container and have a lot of energy and are bouncing around. So entropy is that measure. It is the energy distributed within a system. I'm going to put in molecules within the system. So think of the system as either being the test tube or the beaker or whatever it is that you're considering, how much those molecules are moving around. And now we get to the fun, confusing stuff. Enthalpy, this is with a TH and an A, enthalpy is the heat that either enters or leaves the system. So whenever we mixed two reactants together, some energy either entered that system or was removed from that system, and that is enthalpy. So we're going to call it heat, although it could be energy, but for us, that's what we were measuring. Heat that enters or exits the system. Alrighty. To go ahead and get our values on here, entropy is going to be S. And we put a little circle next to it. Do you got a word for that one, Stan? Prime. Okay, works for me. Um, enthalpy, when we're using that one, is going to be H. Same thing. And then the last definition that we're going to add in here is Gibbs free energy. I wonder who discovered it. Hmm. Um, Gibbs free energy is a function of this relationship. And so we're going to get into that later, a lot later. It's confusing. But this is the relationship between entropy and enthalpy. Sorry, texting language. Entropy and enthalpy. Hopefully that's still in frame. So we've got three definitions. <clears throat> the last thing I want you to go ahead and jot down is the equation that summarizes their relationship. Once we get done with those, we'll go ahead and start some practice problems. So we are looking at the change in Gibbs free energy. And this, surprise, surprise, is a G. The same thing, the prime circle that's with it. Then we have, it is the change in H which was our enthalpy, so remember the H right there, subtracted by temperature, so any temperature change, times the entropy, the energy that was already in the system. So we have this right here. So Gibbs free energy, the change in Gibbs is based on the enthalpy, change in the heat, in the heat that enters or leaves the system, minus the temperature and the energy that was already there in the system to begin with. So that's the equation. The change in the energy in the system. So it's a delta S. Yes. So it's change in the entropy. Exactly. It's the so, change in it. So this yeah. is the temperature that yep. was brought in, right? The no, it's the temperature at, at which this took place. Mm -hmm. That's what I guess that's what I'm meaning by that. Like you brought okay. it up to or oh, sure, it sure. came down to. Perfect. Okay. And then, yes, the change. So make yep. sure all those are deltas. Yes. Anything else from the definitions before we move on to practice problem one? Yes. Go for it. Uh, entropy, enthalpy, and Gibbs free energy all follow the same basic equation, mm. which Miss Anderson is going to show you. Possibly. Possibly. So, for example, we can <clears throat> plug in anything here. We could plug in H for enthalpy, and then have on here, I believe it's delta, no, it's the original. It's, it, it's no it, sigma. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Of H, and this is the product. Product. 
versus same thing sigma, so sum of the enthalpy from the reactants. So it's basically looking at the same thing, but just breaking it down. So same thing, we can go with the S entropy and talk about the sum of the product's energy subtracted by the sum of the energy in the reactants. So the reactants that you're starting with and the products at the end, that change is what we're measuring with the delta S. The change, same with the heat that enters or the heat that exits, is this delta. But then this is showing the relationship between all three of those values, how entropy, enthalpy, and Gibbs all work together. Yeah? Yeah. Cool. Make sure you got it. Let's do problem one. Over here. Doing the check here learning like before. <clears throat> we are looking at 1.3. 4 grams of zinc. So in 1.34 grams of zinc, react with 60 milliliters of 0.75 molar HCl, so hydrochloric acid, 3.14 kilojoules of heat are produced. Determine the enthalpy change per mole of zinc reacting for the reaction. So it's important to notice here, and that we did not see at first, is it's only asking for zinc. So we're looking at zinc right now, but we can totally ignore anything related to the HCl. So let's go ahead and set up this first part of the problem. We've got our grams of zinc, so we, need to, we know we need to go ahead and do the mole conversion. So we're doing grams of zinc, check your periodic table, and you'll get that there is 65.38 grams per mole of zinc. So we do our cancel, cancel, and we end up getting 0 0.02 moles of zinc. And so now this is where our equation that we're using this time is really helpful. Zinc, if we look at the coefficients at the beginning, there is no more that we have to multiply by. So when we have 0 0.02 moles of zinc, we're going to actually be able to cancel this out really easily because there is, oops, nope, back it up. Where are you? I'm just getting ahead of myself. So we've got the moles, but now is where the kilojoules come into because we have to be calculating our enthalpy is what we're doing for this time, our H. So let's go ahead and start with this value. 3.14 kilojoules, and this is where we can start to cancel. So we know we have 0.02 moles of zinc. We're looking at how many kilojoules per mole, and that's where in our equation we don't have to multiply any. If there was a coefficient like 3 or 4 or 2 right here, we would need to multiply this energy, that heat, because for every molecule of zinc that you have, you're going to get this amount. So for example, if we had, let's say, four moles of that in the equation, we would produce a lot more heat than just having one mole. So easy to start out. If we go ahead and cancel out our moles, we know our units are going to be kilojoules, which is what we're looking for right now. And we would plug that in, I believe it's 153 kilojoules. But here's the part that some people have gotten and some people have not. The answer is actually negative 153, and this was really hard for Lonsdale and I to understand. Super really? hard. Oh my god. I could not. Oh, it was bad. But think about it. Think about it. If you have this zinc right here, which apparently starts with a K. Um, Potassium, <laughs> zinc, same thing. Same. It's fine. So we have our zinc right here. <clears throat> As it says in the equation, this much heat is produced. So if you have that zinc in your beaker, or you have it in some test tube, so I'm going to combine it just like we had those models up here. If we have zinc and energy is being produced from this, is it gaining or losing energy? Obviously the answer would be losing energy. So within the system, it is less energy. 
was so, difficult to think about, but think about like that bag that was producing heat or the test tube that's producing heat. If you're holding that sample, it's actually losing heat because it's going into the environment. Whereas if it's a reaction that's getting colder, the energy is actually coming in, so this would be a positive. I know that's really tough to understand, and we're going to be talking about it more in class, but realize that as heat is produced, if it says that in the equation, then it's leaving the system. So it's got to be negative. Positive. Closing thoughts, Lonsdale? So if I'm holding this reaction, is it going to feel hot or cold on my hand when I have a negative kilojoules? Mm -hmm. it's, going it's going to be hot. Because it's coming out of the system and into your hand. The system itself is losing energy. We good? Good. All right. Take Love it. Thanks for the countdown, Lonsdale. So we are going round two on the same process, except now this time we're going to be looking at two different molecules in a reaction, not just one. So let's look at the problem that we're going to be facing. When 1.42 grams of iron react with 1.8 grams of chlorine, 3.22 grams of iron ferrous chloride, and 8.6 kilojoules of heat is produced. What is the enthalpy change for the reaction when one mole is produced? And that's important because remember that would change the coefficients of the equation if that's at 2, 3, or 5. So let's go ahead and write up what the equation would be. We know we have chlorine that is reacting with iron. So FeCl producing FeCl2. Super easy to balance. We know that chlorine is forming a gas, so it's going to be two chlorines. We've got one iron, so we are balanced and ready to go. So that's where all of these are going to be ones. But like we said, if that was changed, that would kind of mix up this problem a little bit. So let's go ahead and copy down what we have. We have 1.42 grams of iron with 1.80 grams of chlorine. And we don't really need to mess with the other values yet because we're just looking at reactants this time. So out of the reactants, we first have to distinguish which one is an excess and which one is the limiting reactant because that one will help us decide where this heat is coming from. <clears throat> so in iron, we go ahead and set this up to determine moles. Same thing with chlorine. When iron. in doubt, do moles. Do what, what? When in doubt, do moles. Of course. So for iron, I believe it's 55.845 grams per mole. Whereas chlorine, there's 35.45 grams per mole. Check your periodic table just to make sure. Grams, 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 grams. And so we end up with moles. And that's where our values came out to... 0 0.0254, if I'm reading that correctly, moles of iron, where we have 0 0.0523, it's a little dyslexic, 523 moles of chlorine. So this is where we're able to see which one is in excess and which one's a limiting reagent. Um, looking at both of those, we know that this one is going to be our limiting. And how do we know that? Because it's less. Oh. So we, this one is in excess because there's a lot of it. And we considered at the beginning thinking about, well, to even form one of these molecules, you actually have to have two chlorines. And so we're like, well, what if it is still limiting? But even if you go in and look at um, having to have two of these for every one, so thinking about having to have double that of chlorine, if that makes any sense, so even if you do that math, you get that this would have to be 0 0.0518, something like that. So if that was the case, it actually still shows that there's more chlorine than iron. So it's still fine. We know that this one is an excess while that one's limiting. All right? So since we know that this one is our limiting reactant, that's going to be the one that we're going to stick with. What we've got to do now is now take the kilojoules that it gave us, 8.06 kilojoules of heat, and we're going to put that over this value right here. So, 8.6 kilojoules, which I'm going to leave it in kilojoules, you can convert, but I'm going to leave it, 
over 0 0.0254 moles. So how many kilojoules per mole is produced? And that's what the original prompt asked us to do. So simple division right there, and you get 338 kilojoules. And again, heat is produced, so it's going to be positive or negative. Since energy is produced and leaving the system, we know this is a negative kilojoules. 338 kilojoules are produced and leave the system. Closing thoughts, Lons, now? None. All right, on to the next one. One. So continuing on, we are going to be looking at uh, another way to look at the enthalpy. Uh, and the way we're looking at the enthalpy in this case is we have another way of calculating the delta H for the process. And so we're going to be looking at the change in enthalpy when we react nitrogen gas with oxygen gas to form nitrous oxide, NO2. And if you look at this balanced equation, it's one nitrogen, two oxygens, forming two NO2s. If you look at the following equations, what we essentially have done, if you think back to your redox days, is written out half reactions. So the half reaction is that N2 plus O2 yields 2NO, which is true. And then what happens a little bit later on is that that NO in the form of a gas reacts with a half O2 gas to form NO2. This half NO2 gas, what that is telling you is that it is using one half of O2, so one oxygen. So if you add up some oxygens here, we have one oxygen here, half of two oxygens, which is still one oxygen, to form a grand total of NO2. So that's the problem that we're going for, is this whole one here, the N2 plus 2O2 yields 2NO. When we look at the half reactions, and this is where you have to be careful, because Ms. Anderson and I spent far too long trying to figure out how to explain this, and why we could not figure out this correct answer. If you look, you have N2 plus 2O2 yields 2NO2. In this case, with the half reaction, you have two of the NOs, and here you only have one of the NOs. If you look a little bit back in the reading, it talks about when you have a reaction that has half, like twice as much here, and only uh, half as much here, you have to multiply this whole quantity by two. Because what we're starting out with is we're essentially saying that only one of those uh, produces 57.06 kilojoules, but overall we need two uh, of the NO2s that are produced, so it's double this amount here. That's the long explanation for a very simple math problem. And the very simple math problem goes like this. The change in H, as Ms. Anderson explained earlier, is the sum of the change in H and the products minus the sum of the change in H of the reactants. Nope. No? Nope. Wait. Yep. It's maybe no sums? No sums. No it's sums. Just the ha it's the half reaction. Exactly. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> Ms. Anderson explained it eloquently. I used it wrong. No, you did a great job. Never mind. This one's we're tough. Good. So this one's actually, I, I thought we were getting into this because we're getting into that a little bit later. It's too early. Looking at this, though, the half reaction for the N2 to O2 to 2NO, the change in H there is 180 and a half kilojoules. And the change in the delta H for the second reaction is a negative 57.06 kilojoules. Quick review of information. Which one of these is going to feel cold on your hand? Hmm, mm. good question. Great question, Ms. Anderson. Do you have a guess? Hmm, which one's going to feel cold? Which one's going to feel cold? If I do this reaction in your hand, is it going to be the formation of the NO, or is it going to be the formation of the NO2? I think it's going to be formation of the NO because that is increasing the heat, and so therefore it would be taking it from my hand. I think you are exactly correct. Woohoo! And I think with this one, since it's a negative, it's producing heat, 
so it's going to be producing heat out. But we want to know, overall, is it taking in heat or is it producing heat? Don't look at the answer in the corner. Don't look at the answer in the corner. <laughs> we'll, we'll cover that. I'm just kidding. We know, it's 66.4. <laughs> now, so what we're essentially saying is that this right here plus this right here should tell us an overall uh, amount of energy because obviously 180 uh, minus the 57.06 is going to give us the total amount of energy that it's used. So if we do that math out, we end up with... Oh, I didn't bring a calculator. Yep. We end up with something. Something that's not right. Something that's not right. It's... Uh, uh, 123.4... I don't know. 4.4? 4? 123 plus something. What we know is that this is definitely not correct. And the reason it's not correct is because, again, back to this point here, there are, it produces two NOs, only one NO is used here. So to get this to work, instead, we multiply this whole section by two. Oh, and Lonsdale, you might want to point out in the top equation, too, how that one has a two, because I feel like that's significant as well. It's true. In this top equation, this one has a two. Uh, so because it's going from N2 to NO2, so it makes 2 NO2, mm -hmm. and in here it makes 2 NO, but it was only making 1 NO here, and so we know there's that discrepancy between this top one, which is the answer that we're getting, so hence we have to multiply by 2, and then this one here, which is a singular one. Perfect. So, if we do this, you do some fancy math, uh, and remember your uh, order of operations, you always do the multiply and the divide first. So this multiplied together, uh, and or divided, depending on what you want to do, but it's multiply, so multiply. So this multiplied together, and then you do subtraction, and you end up with 66.4 kilojoules. Got it. Questions? See us later. One. And on page 270, we're doing a checking for understanding. We're taking that concept where we added the two half equations together and we are making it so that it is a little bit more complicated. So this is part two of what we had just talked about. So the equation, uh, sorry, the question we're looking at is on page 270. It says calculate the heat of combustion of one mole of ethanol, which is C2H5OH in liquid form, when water in liquid form and carbon dioxide in gaseous form are formed. Use the following enthalpies of formation. For ethanol, it's negative 278 kilojoules per mole. For water, it's negative 286 kilojoules per mole. And for carbon dioxide, it is negative 394 kilojoules per mole. We know the answer is going to be 1368 kilojoules per mole, and I'm going to talk to you about how we get to that. So the first thing that I always do when I have, any, when I have a problem is I write down everything that I know. 278 kilojoules per mole for ethanol. For water, it's going to be negative 286 kilojoules per mole. And for carbon dioxide, it's going to be negative 394 kilojoules per mole. So, what we talked about before, remember, it is the products minus the reactants. So, so this is where that equation that I, Miss Anderson explained well came into being, and then I just kind of screwed it up because I got too excited. So it's the uh, change in H equals the sum of H of the products minus the sum H the reactants, and this is the change, and this is also the change here. So the total H is essentially the products minus the reactants. So in this case, with my equation here, that means I need to have uh, an equation which I have some products and reactants. It's a combustion reaction. So combustion reactions mean that energy is going to be produced. So that's good because it's a negative energies, which is what we wanted. And so it's a combustion of ethanol. And when we have combustion, combustion is always combined with oxygen. That's what combustion means. It's combined with oxygen, produces heat, and it also produces water, and it produces some carbon dioxide. Now, looking at this equation, 
It's a great equation, however, it has a slight problem. The slight problem is that it is unbalanced. So to balance this equation out, I first count my carbons. My carbons are two, two, so then I have uh, two carbons, two carbons for balancing. Brilliant. And then I'm going to flip over to my hydrogens. I have five, six. I have uh, two here, so I'm going to add a three. Now I have three hydrogens times two, which is six hydrogens. Carbons are still at two, which is brilliant. Now I need to balance out my oxygens. I have one, two, three. Over here I have three, uh, plus four more is six. So my total over here is seven, so I need seven over here. So I put a six right here. Mm. Six times, nope, that's a lie. Good try. I'm going for the total. Yep. Three right here. The reason it's a three is because I was trying to get to six. I just got ahead of myself. I'm too excited because it's chemistry. <laughs> so three right there to give me a total of six plus one is seven, and then we have a balanced equation. Whew. It's a good thing I've done this once or twice. Yep, half the battle. Yep. Half the battle. So now what we have is we have a sum of the uh, reactants and a sum of the products, and we're able to do some subtracting here. So I'm going to say what is the... Uh, and the change in enthalpy for the products minus the change in enthalpy for the reactants. So here's where that coefficient that Ms. Anderson was talking about came in, uh, comes into play. When she said if there's like two or three or five, you have to deal with that. We have coefficients now. We have a one here, we have a three here, we have a three here, and we have a two right here. So what that means is that we're going to have to deal with those coefficients when we have the reactants and when we have the products. So for the first one, the one that has a 1 for the coefficient, it's 1 times the total amount of energy, 278 kilojoules per mole. So this right here, these are my products. Negative. Unless you're doing that later. Good point. Negative, thank you, you Rosanna. It's yep. a negative. He got on to me earlier for not putting my negatives in there. So It's true. Turnabout's fair play. So it's a negative 278 kilojoules per mole. That, you then subtract, because it's the products, minus the react, oh, nope, nope. No? Ah, oh, damn it. Dang it. Products. <laughs> products first. Lawndale products. We products are on the other side. We both missed that one. Yeah, Sorry. Yeah, 6 o'clock on a Friday afternoon. Now you know when we're doing this. This is how much we love you. In oh, Canada. my goodness. It's so late. <laughs> Products. So, products are these here, the water and the carbon dioxide. So, I'm going to do the water and the carbon dioxide first. So, I'm going to have my waters, I'm going to have my carbon dioxides. My water, looking at my numbers here, is a negative 286 kilojoules per mole, plus, because it's a summation, negative 394 kilojoules per mole. Now, this is actually where those numbers come into play. Because there are three waters, you have to multiply this whole number by three, and because there are two carbon dioxides, you multiply this number by two. So now, in a very large bracket, we take our products minus our reactants. Our reactants are the ethanol, uh, which is C2H5OH, and the ethanol, we have a value of negative 278 kilojoules per mole. It's times one because there's only one mole of them. So now, we do this. This is when you get out the electronic brains. You go typey, 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 and you end up with a negative 1368 kilojoules per mole. So we did not mess up in ignoring oxygen. It's just at the time of this filming, we don't know why you ignore oxygen. We don't know. We know that it has to be in there to be balanced and be a true combustion reaction. But if you look back at the problem, they did not give you any values for oxygen. And we, the answer works out without including oxygen in it. And we don't know why. The long and short of it is we don't know why. The other long and short of it is we'll find out why. Yay. So by the time you're watching this, we may have an answer to that or we may not. We'll keep working on it. Anyway. Uh, thanks for watching. This is Enthalpy and Entropy and Gibbs Free Energy and all sorts of really fun stuff. Uh, from us at Sammy, I'm Mr. Lonsdale. And I'm Miss Anderson. We will see you in class. <laughs> Bye, guys.